good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartel here, Marketing and Communications Director for the Cascade Pacific Council, and welcome to today's <laughs> webinar. And today we're going to talk about virtual Cub Scout advancement. Deb Hiltebrand is here with us from PAC 351, and she's going to share all of her wisdom and some amazing tools with us today. But first, let me dive into our latest and greatest news around the CPC. Of course, uh, as you just saw in those videos, for those of you watching, or if you just listen to the music, uh, the we have only 94 days left until summer camp opens. So we're super, super excited about that, of course. And I know every single scout is super excited about that. So. We are really, 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 really pumped for it. As you can see in those videos, of course, uh, that was pre-COVID, so we don't have masks and things like that in those in those videos. But we have new protocols and whatnot that are being set up for summer camp. So it's going to be safe and fun and awesome and, and new programs and things like that. So don't forget to check this, the latest and greatest out about summer camps at our last webinar of the month. And we'll get into that uh, in detail on those webinars. But just around the council here, just a couple of quick things here. For those of you who haven't heard, we have some new Cub Scout meeting guidelines for safe in-person meetings because they are a go for now for all units across the CPC. We're super, super excited about this because basically it boils down to we have devised our own category. We're not a, a a social gathering group because we're larger than that, but we're also not youth sports in those large organizations. So we, we basically float in the middle. And so our COVID task force has devised a way for us to all meet across the CPC safely. There's some fantastic guidelines. I know for our unit, for I'm the uh, scout master as well. And so for us, we're meeting outdoors, wearing masks, and, and it's just it's been fantastic. So we're saying, hey, Cub, Cub Scouts can do it as well. Basically, it boils down to talk to your families about it, talk to your parents, and see what everybody's comfort level is. I think there's some really solid guidance and, and evidence that points to how safe it can be just following these guidelines. So you can check that out at cpcbsa.org slash COVID, and we've got the downloadable guidelines there and everything, some real great tips Lots of great FAQs there for any questions that you have. And if you have more questions, feel free to contact us at any time at info at cpcbsa.org. And we'll get those added questions and answers for you put on that page as well. But basically, it boils down to really being outside, small cohort sizes, wearing masks, and getting your approval from parents and your charter reps as well. So let's see. Next up, we have a recruiting webinar for, for Scouts and for Cub Scouts especially, but really there's going to be two of them on April 12th. So you're going to get tips and guidelines and how to meet, whether it's virtually or in person, some great, just this is going to be a fantastic conversation. So check that out. This is going to be really, really awesome. You can sign up for these at Facebook as well as on our website at cpcbsa.org slash events or slash calendar. Sorry about that. So you can check that out too. Also, just a quick update for those of you who tuned in previously, we did this campaign about keeping our Oregon camps open, and we had a huge letter writing campaign. This wasn't just us in the CPC, it was a whole bunch of camps around the area that joined forces here to write letters to the, to the governor, uh, to Governor Kate Brown, and just say, hey, please keep the camps open. This, we need solidification that this, this is going to happen this summer, and by golly, it worked. So we have confirmation we're going to be open this summer, super excited about that. So thank you to everyone who joined in and helped us out there. Really just a wonderful, wonderful job. Speaking of summer camp, oh, I forgot to update this. It says 108 days, but we're 94 days. So I got to remember to update this slide. But, uh, but there are a couple of opportunities here. Not only is summer camp happening, but we also could use some camp staff. So, so check it out at cpcbsa.org slash camp staff. If you know of anybody who is, and it doesn't have to be a scout, if you know any teenager, 15 years old and up, just a fantastic opportunity to make lifelong friends, make a huge impact on kids, and have an incredible time outdoors. Lots of great opportunities there for that. Also, Camp for All is going on for all of you unit leaders out there and Camp for All folks. This is happening, of course. And if you haven't checked it out, go to uh, cpcbsa.org slash start camp for all because there are a lot of great tools there. Literally step-by-step -step guide on how to run a Camp for All campaign for your scouting unit as well. A couple other quick things I just want to run down. And April 3rd and 10th, we have Commissioner's College. April 12th, like I mentioned, is the Cub Scout Recruiting Webinar. April 17th is the Solve Spring Cleanup. April 29th is Cascadia's uh, Impact Hour. May 20th and 21st is our 19th Annual Sporting Clays Shootout. Pretty awesome. 
NYLT is also happening this summer too. So National Youth Leadership Training. So check that out as well. There's still space there. So you'll want to look into that. We actually have an NYLT page on the website. So go to cpcbsa.org for that. And Powderhorn Training is going to be super fun. And it is in August as well. All right. Enough of my chatting here and babbling on about all the awesome things that are going on, but we have lots of awesome things going on and happening. We're also developing a new program guide. You remember the one we received the last couple of years, a printed piece. We're actually going to go virtual for this year because things have still been in flux, but we are working on a program and activity guide for 2021 and 2022. So that's going to be to you as soon as we get it finalized. It's going to be great. It's really going to be some awesome tools. And speaking of tools, Deb Hildebrand is here. She is Cub Master of Pack 3 351. And we were in our district chat and chew meeting. And so our district breakout session, and I got to see some of Deb's amazing, absolutely fantastic virtual materials, classrooms. She has, she has really gone full bore into this program. And so it's been really, really fun. So I'm super excited to have Deb here. I'm going to let her take it away and give us some Guidance will then have a little conversation afterwards. I might pipe in once in a while just because I'll have tons of questions too. And we'll also feel free. You can ask your questions on Facebook or you can toss it into the chat as well for those of you who are, so those of you who are joining us here on the, on the webinar as well. All right, Deb, I'll let you take, run the show now. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. All right. Hi. Uh, hopefully we have a... Um an install going and they're choosing now to bang so hopefully you guys can't hear it too bad um, that's right we'll just so dance start... we'll dance to it we can uh, we can all to dance it. to the pounding i was debating about doing it in the car <laughs> all right so i'm going to share my screen with you guys and give you kind of a tour oh i gotta click all right so you should be able to see um the cascade pacific council site now um, this is the easiest way to get in there, but I will show you an actual easier way um, in a second. So um, from the Cascade Pacific Council, go to districts, Cascadia, because like Chris said, I am part of the Cascadia district. Um, if you ever get an email from me, you will get a huge list of all the jobs that I do, just like everyone else. We have a more than we should be doing probably, <laughs> but we like to help out. From here, go to the digital Cub Scout programming. That is actually a link to my PAC website, which I um, got access to in August or so. Um, I will tell you, my background is in animal training, not in computers. So I had to learn a lot of this stuff along the way. So if you're not a computer person, it's cool too, because we're all figuring it out together for our scouts. So um, on this site, um, this is actually a digital scouting um, and restarting leader resources. I created this originally for my gen leaders, but then I started sharing it because there's nothing to say that only my pack gets it, so we're sharing. So right here on the screen, I'll show you the QR code. The QR code is anything you can scan um, with your tablet or your phone. And if you have a chance right now and want to scan that, that will actually send you directly to this website through this QR code. And I'll talk about QR codes a little bit, but they make it very easy to access a quick website or a sign-up sheet or um, a Google form or anything like that, you can make a QR code for almost anything. Um, our in-person events, we use a QR code to make sure that everyone does the COVID screening. So there's all kinds of great uses for them. Um, you don't have to pass out a website. If you don't have them on the computer, you can't share a link. So that's the quickest way to get them there. So um, down here, so I've created um, a Google Classroom for leaders. Each classroom um, is broken up by den and each Den has a classroom slide set for every requirement and at least two or three electives per den. So the idea is that you would join it with this code here. So you would go to your Google account, hit the little plus at the top, type in the code. There are two classroom codes for most all of my classrooms because my classrooms got full and I was capped out um, at the users. So I ended up duplicating all the classrooms so that we can have more users. I actually have um, almost 2,600 users in 48 states and seven countries, something like that, using these classroom codes um, or the classrooms so that they can have a slide set to share with their scouts in a digital um, or online meeting. So you would basically open up your classroom um, with the code, you would share the slide set, and then it'll walk you through how to um, present the, set, the slide set for a den meeting. 
So if you were a lion leader, you would join the lion classroom and you'd get in there to get um, the slide sets to run your meeting. I also include on there what requirements are covered at each meeting. So if this is your first meeting, it'll cover requirement three, four, and five, and then homework for requirement four. If there's any um, handouts or anything like that you need, they're included in the classroom also. You can always email me or text me um, if you have any questions too through my Google account or my um, Outlook. So hopefully we won't be in online meetings forever. Um, so I have other ideas here. There's some different ones down here. There's uh, scavenger hunts. We're actually using a scavenger hunt this coming weekend. We're doing a spring break rocket camp, um, half virtual. We're doing a couple of meetings virtually and then we're doing an in-person meeting also for rocket launches. Um, but this uh, scavenger hunt is for when they're not working with us at our launch. They'll have some free time and they can do that. Um, lots of videos, kids love the videos. So I've um, used a lot of those in our meetings because they're just something that the kids enjoy to, to watch. And it's one of those things that we can use that we wouldn't have been able to use very well before. And now we can. So I'm gonna take advantage of, of the advantages that we have right now, instead of focusing on the negatives. You know, So there's different observation games. Kim's game is a game that uh, Baden Powell created. So it's kind of fun to incorporate that one in there. List of things that you guys can check out tips for restarting in-person meetings. Like I said about QR codes, if you go to, there's a click here um, link for making your own QR codes. You can go to that, it's a free account, um, and you can sign up to any link you can make into a QR code and then you just save it and share it. I share a lot of them on my slide sets um, for my screen, the announcement section, and that's pretty fun. Um, so if there's a parent. You know, I just tried it because it's great. So anybody who watches this video and watches the recording of it, you can just try it out right here. Just grab your phone and zap it. It's really, really easy and amazing to be able to do that. And I think everybody's yeah. phones now can do this easier. We've had QR codes around for a long time from a marketing perspective, but boy, that sure makes it easy. Have you found that people are, are you must be using, you're using it a lot. So people must be using it as well. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this screen where there's six all at once because your phone gets very confused. But <laughs> when you have one in the corner, you can have several around the page if you needed to, like I do it with, hey, sign up for Rocket Camp. Hey, here's um, our um, service project information. So it's all on the announcement screen or several pages. I used it. Uh, we have a Camp for All code that actually sends them to our PAX Camp for All page so that, that we can do it. When I did our blue and gold, I had that QR on every single slide. Um, as we were talking about camp for all. So no matter where they jumped in, they could easily scan it uh, during the meeting and they don't have to interrupt their scout. They don't have to steal the computer to go to a link. They can just scan it um, if the parents in the background um, listening, which we hope they're doing every week, right? Um, and then we have also used it for um, Cash App for a while too, before we went virtual. So some QR codes are amazing. They're super handy. Um, I also include on here um, a Google, Google survey for COVID screening when you're doing in-person, it's definitely recommended to do that. Um, I have used this one here as a COVID screening one and it goes to our Google form. And I also included on here a copy so that you guys can just make a copy and use it for yourself, just edit where you need to edit. Um, but it's nice to make sure that you have everyone coming, do the screening at least the day before or as they arrive type thing. And then it also includes, if you say yes to any of these, you cannot attend the meeting because we don't wanna expose anyone um, or if they have family members that have symptoms, that kind of thing. Uh, down below, we have in-person meetings. So I use, uh, we have a larger pack, so we can't meet all at once. So we break into to groups for our rocket camp and we actually did a um, Weeblos uh, castaway day last weekend and we used, Sign up genius, you create how many slots you are allowed to have minus um, however many people are running it. So if we had, like last week, we had two leaders and three scouts that were part of the, well, the leaders kids, you know how it works. Um, they were there all day. So they were part of the count. So we uh, left what, seven spots or whatever for um, the rest of the kids to come in. So we had people signing up and then they would come in their time slot. Um, and with the sign up genius, you can tell them right away and they can just do it through the website. Super easy. Any in-person meetings, obviously keeping in um, distancing and all of that in mind, but even bike rides, geocaching, um, hiking, obviously. We do a monthly hike club with PAC 351. Um, when we've been more restricted on numbers, we did a family-centered hike and we just posted where they would go for this month and they sent pictures in. Um, when we are allowed more people, uh, we can break it up. We've done 
um, where we had to do cohorts of 10. So we just had two leaders take the hikes in two different directions instead of having everybody together for our numbers. The rocket days are super fun and fairly easy to keep distance because you want them to be away from the action anyways. Bike rodeo is always good. Um, there's extra links here, orienteering, 4T Trail in Portland, Savvy Island Lighthouse hikes, all those kinds of fun things. I included a list of social distancing games. There's lots more. Just, I mean, just get creative, but honestly, you can uh, search and find a lot of them too, but there's lots of them that you can do. Idea is to keep our Cub Scouts apart. It's a little more difficult with the Cub Scouts. They always want to touch and hug. Um, my guys are very much that way. So making sure that you give them something physical that they can see. So a hula hoop or a spot marker or a painter's tape on the ground, chalk if it's not raining, um, that kind of thing. I have a section on recruiting, which um, Chris was just talking about is coming up um, in April that we'll have special meetings about it, but you can always recruit. So, you know, post on Facebook, post on Nextdoor. Um, I have a link here for um, Cascade Pacific Council Marketing Team. It even says, hi, Chris, on there. Um, but you can always pass out um, peer cards or business cards. Um, I have a generic pack business card that's just for um, information for our pack, so it doesn't change when the leadership changes. But isn't wasted money in the long run because the scout is thrifty. Um, do a year round program. The more you do all summer and the more you're out in uniform, the better recruiting is gonna be, um, especially right now when people are really looking for stuff to do. Um, we use the vinyl sign. We also used um, recruiter rocks this year where we put a QR, our QR code onto rocks when people do the, the rock hiding and painting. I do stickers on um, treats for Halloween and uh, Play-Doh to pass out so that they can have access to the website quickly and easily with those QR codes. So um, advancements, got to be a little creative with those right now. So I include ideas on that. Um, I am also the advancement chair. So I play advancement fairy once a month um, and I deliver to every everybody's house. Um, I usually include extra little fun things because we're trying to make it more interactive and engaging for the kids right now. Um, so I include things like I made a uniform game last month. Um, Home Depot build kit, so you can ask Home Depot. They usually, if they have enough, they'll usually give you enough for a pack, but um, spread out the locations. If you're all located in the Portland area, that might be tough, <laughs> um, but there's lots of things. So um, get creative on, on those fun things. Um, some people do a drive-by advancement and that's fun too. Virtual Pinewood Derby. Um, I have a link here for Chris, just did the Wednesday webinar a little bit, a couple weeks ago um, about doing that. We're still working on that. I'm actually, repairing my track right now because I uh, found it in disrepair. But um, we're going to be streaming ours um, on Zoom and using uh, Stream OBS, um, Streamlab, sorry, Streamlab. There's links on here. Again, I'm not a computer person. <laughs> um, so service project ideas, we've done a lot of porch drop-offs and color sheets to go to care homes, that kind of thing. But there's lots of them. Portland Parks has a, a Google Form sign up to, to do planting days in the parks. Uh, my wolf and I did that one. Always, always, always do the summertime pack award. Those will get your uh, pack out there again and your kids um, extra goodies for, for scouting all year long. And it's not very hard to do um, activities that'll get you those awards. Um, the little more difficult one is the outdoor activity award right now because of summer camps, but there are alternatives um, if we had to close camp again, but we don't have camp closed. So they get to go to summer camp and earn the summertime or outdoor award. The summertime one is you offer at least one event every month during the summer, recommend at least two, but any of those outdoor things, the bike rides, the bike rodeo, uh, hiking club, any of those things would count for those activities um, to get them scouting all year. And you don't lose them all summer because they want to do fun things. So we want to make sure that we uh, offer our scouts those fun activities. Um, always look at Scout Book because the requirements do change for the Outdoor Activity Award uh, based on their rank. So make sure you're checking that. I like to share it with my pack, my DEN families to make sure that they know what kind of activities they need to, to do to get that. That is the end of my site. Um, so there's lots of things on here. I'll go back to the QR code. Sorry, that's a too fast. Um, and the Google Classroom is super usable. I don't know if... Uh, Chris wants me to share that or not. But. I would love for you to show us that it, because it is, we were using that early in the summer and I played with it for the first time. And, and when schools were trying to figure out, you know, before, right as COVID hit, trying to figure out what they were going to do. And, 
And I really found it very user-friendly. I, I was really amazed at how easy it was to set something up and, and really allow people to see certain things, have, you could have leaders view certain things and approve things. You know, we were playing with it from a merit badge perspective and, and uh, it's, it's pretty neat. So yeah, if you want to share one, that would be, that would be really Talk about Google classroom. Yeah. Let me stop real yeah. quick so I can get there. Let's see. But folks, as you can into, see here that yeah. uh, Deb's got just a couple of resources. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It's really. So I'm going to show you mine as a student, not as a, not as mine. Mine will look different than yours. So. Sure. So this is actually my pack. I had my pack join the resources so that I could see what it looks like because it's different as the author of it. So um, you should be able to see right now, the um, these are all the classrooms. This is one classroom for each one, but I actually do have multiples because um, like I said, it was full. I had too many students and nobody else could join. So they will look the same. If you join the arrow of light in, it'll be the same no matter which classroom you join. Well, let's say I was in, I'm the wolf, wolf leader. So if you were to join that, this is what your stream page would look like. Um, this page is where I do announcements and I add extra things. I updated the website. I do, um, here's where I added another classroom. I actually created an offline advancement calendar for all of my dens so that when I started this, I was ready to lead everything myself because um, if leaders were a little bit overwhelmed, I didn't wanna put that on them. I was not the cub master until this year. <laughs> um, but um, so basically all of these have the advancement schedule. So you can say, hey, here's what we're doing for March. And everybody has access to all of their things for March. So this is um, announcements and some people do add things there too, and that's fine. In the classwork section, you will see all the slides. Um, so if you said, oh, I'm gonna do Island at the Moon. This is a required one, click in there. Um, here it says requirements one and two, requirement three is given as homework, requirements three and four for week two. So those will cover what you do um, for the requirement during that week. When you open up the, um, slides. Of course, it's going to be slow today. <laughs> That's just how it works, isn't it? It is sometimes. It's pretty amazing. I'm, actually, I think the thing is going on from oh, there a go. perspective these days, but anyway, it's going to Oh, yeah, it does. There you go. Temperamental sometimes. So, um, and you would just share this, and then if you were doing a Zoom or Google Meet or whatever, um, you would share that screen. I typically will go to share first, so it's, um, or sorry, present first, so it's large. So every slide set I make has an activity page. My guys, if they get there early, I give them something to do um, before they are meeting. We always did the pledge, the oath and the law. There's my bear when he was, well, he's a Weeblos now, but when he was a bear, we were doing the veterans parade there. Um, so we include that in every meeting. Um, talking about how we communicate. I just signed for this one. Here's a, this one is a video, sign language, um, roar. Oh. Oh, I will tell you on that one. Oh, you know, I need to update that one. Um, they don't play, I embed the videos. So if you download and use them in PowerPoint, the videos will be embedded. But if they, if you're using them in Google, you have to use the link. Um, you have to make up a story for this one. So I include that, trades, homework, ideas. Oh, oh, there's my, my uh, Weeblo is playing Baden Powell <laughs> and playing uh, uh, it's on his recorder. And here's the second meeting, getting a lot of the same ones. Oh, this one we did um, a campfire. So there's lots of links in there for the campfire program. Let's see what else I can show you. Oh, oh back to my classroom. You don't want to see it from my classroom. And so do you have kids download and print things out or their parents download and print things out beforehand uh, or, or? Well, these are, are designed for leaders to lead, mm -hmm. um, to use. So I don't share these with kids. I share these with the leaders. Okay. Um, but yeah, if they had handouts or anything like that, they're all included in the classwork section. And yeah, if they wanted to email them out to them, if they wanted to deliver them in the advancements, very deliveries, they could do it that way. Um, it really depends on your families and you can really make it work. Um, sometimes I, you know, maybe I'll just email it to them and, hey, show me you drew it on a piece of paper. You know, it's really do your best at this point. And if they don't have a printer or whatever, we can make it work for whatever their needs are. That's great. 
It's interesting because you can, once we're, we're meeting again too, what I love it is that you can absolutely do these in during a meeting as well, because you've got videos in there. It kind of breaks up, can break up the monotony of, of just, just the leader speaking and trying to keep the kids entertained and, and all of that. It's really, it's great. What has been the feedback from, from some of the parents or leaders? Um, all of my den leaders are using these. Um, like I said, I have almost 2,600 users um, using these classrooms. Um, I don't know offhand if they're all using them every week. I don't hear, and honestly, if they tell me where they're from, that's up to them. Um, I don't have to know where they're from. That was all voluntary that they told me where they were. I'm still missing Wyoming and Montana, so <laughs> I'm waiting for those ones. But um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, um, they, I like the embracing the technology that we have to use. Um, it's a lot of, that we didn't address a whole lot in Cub Scouts before. Um, my two Cub Scouts, I have a Wolf and a Weeblos, and uh, they've been online students since preschool. So I think that was partly why I was able to jump in and just get ready to do this more than a lot of families, because I know how online schools work. I know what works for the teachers. I know what doesn't work for the teachers. Um, I know what tools the kids enjoy and what really helps them to engage in the lessons and things like that. Um, as much as I can, we do, you know, hey, go find the six essentials. Be careful, don't run into things. I've had, I've had crashes. <laughs> but, um, so I, you know, make them move during the meetings. And I tell them right off, if you have to move, you have to move. I mean, you're Cub Scouts and if you're sitting all day at school, we don't want you to have to wiggles and stuff with us because we want it to be fun, you know? Right, that's a super, it's a super good point. And especially these days, I know when, when our troop was started meeting, Woo, the energy was palpable. <laughs> it was, they were so excited. Yeah. And they miss each other so much. Exactly. You know, I mean, if I have time, I let them share. We play charades. You know, if we're done early, what do you guys want to do? You know, I get a lot of, hey, can we go back to the color pages? Sure. You know. So, oh, and here's another tip Chris and I were talking about. I have made my own backdrop because, again, I have a wolf and I'm the wolf leader. And when he sits next to me with the virtual screen, he disappears. So the virtual screen isn't good for my wiggle guy. He's very wiggly. He's normal, eight years old, you know. Um, so I, I like the backdrop. And if you're crafty like me, you can get there, but it's not hard, simple. <laughs> it's a super, super good point. And, and it makes it fun. It makes it fun for the kids. It makes it fun, it feels like you're there and, and all of that. That's really, really great. How about for you guys, you're, you're starting to do some in-person things with some small groups. Now you're a larger pack, so you're having to break things up. So you were telling me earlier a little bit about what you're doing this weekend. If you can, why don't you, if you could share that, that would be great because it'll give some people some ideas, I think, on, on how this could work, especially when you have to work within a, the 10 person parameter for the unit and then two leaders kind of thing. Yeah, and I'll share my screen again because it's on my website because that's the easiest way to connect to people nowadays. Um, so I have little tabs here and I have a tab for Spring Break Rocket Camp. And that's what we're doing. It's starting on Friday night. Um, we're meeting kind of a hybrid and I'm letting them go, you know what, nothing is required here. If you wanna jump into one meeting or all of them, you're welcome. Um, if you don't feel comfortable meeting in person, that's fine, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I, I started this page a, a little while back asking people, we had a Christmas camp out and you can check that out on our website too. It's still up there and all the links are active still. Um, but so we did um, Christmas camp out where I encouraged everybody to camp in their house somewhere under their table or under their bed or um, in the backyard if they felt brave. Now, now it wouldn't be so bad, but um, yeah, so we encouraged that. For the Christmas camp out, I was even a little more involved. I included a menu and I want the Wee Blues to cook and all of that stuff. Um, for the rocket camp, I went a little bit less involved, but um, I like to create logos for everything because it's fun. <laughs> I created my pack logo not too long ago. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but so I include the links for them to print out anything they need. So Friday night, we're going to meet um, about five. I encourage them to set up their campsite and things like that ahead of time. But then when we meet in person, we'll be making salsa rockets. And um, I included some patterns for them to use for different craft projects. So we're going to make our own stomp rockets and we're going to make alka Salsa rockets together online um, the night before. They have to sign up for Sign Up Genius for the um, time slots. And then I also have the link to the Google form COVID screening and then the medical forms because we haven't met much in person. So if they need to just turn that in, they can. Um, so they'll 
be here for one hour slots, my kids and I will be there from 10 to two. So when they're not meeting with us doing the airplanes or the rockets or whatever, they can do the scavenger hunt or borax crystals or salt paintings that are all on that theme. There's the, the pictures that I shared earlier. So they can do all those things with links to how to do them so that they can create the theme. We also have links to the NASA website for the Mars Rover type videos and then the scavenger hunt to get them outside and taking pictures or circling if they don't want to take pictures. I always give them another choice because I, I never want my families to have to go shopping for anything for our activities if they don't have to. Um, I always have um, a supply list ahead of time for our any of our activities. So this one was at the top of the page and our Christmas camp out was the same way. I had, here's what to buy for food. Here's our alternatives. Here's what to have for crafts. It could be paper or cardstock or cardboard or you know, give them a wide variety of, of supplies in case they don't have exactly, they don't need to go out and get anything. Um, we're having a movie night, which they love. We've done uh, two other movie nights. We did one for our camp out and then we did uh, one for, um, because our Christmas December pack meeting, they always like that. Um, and then also a scout zone on Sunday morning so that they can get together and do the scout zone at the end. Share pictures if anybody sends me pictures. Um, so all kinds of things and they can just link on it anytime on this one, they can just call me um, or email me for the link to the Zoom. But anytime I use Scoutbook for events, they include this, the Zoom link to our meetings too. That's great. This is, it's just so amazing. It's so impressive and, and such great creativity and, and that you make your own logos. Of course, I appreciate that, right? Because I'm the marketing guy. So, so no, it's just fantastic. And so for all of you who are watching uh, now live or watching later, it's, these resources are just fantastic. And it's all here. I mean, the scout books themselves have amazing, are amazing resources, but this just takes it all to the next level. It's really just so, so fun. And it just makes it so fun for the kids and easier for the parents and easier for the leaders. It's just, just it's just amazing. So thank you so much for, for doing that. I have a quick, quick, quick couple of questions for you. Uh, in terms of something we talked about earlier, we've been sort of talking a lot about at the council is just cadence of meeting and the importance of it. Have you guys been meeting pretty much even virtually or in person, whatnot, throughout this whole last year? Have you been doing this weekly or how have you guys Absolutely. Done? Yeah. Um, yeah. And if anybody missed any, I like I had a scout join in late and I just shared the slide set so they could catch up on their own too. But um, yeah, so we closed. I think our last meeting was March 9th, I believe it was. We had a Cub Scout Olympics pack meeting and then we were closed, I think the following weekend, like Friday or something. And then it was spring break. So it was like, all right, let's wait and see, right? It'll be two weeks. <laughs> and then I think we missed one week with, I was the tiger leader at that time. Um, so we missed that one week. And then I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. So I had my tigers going from March 30th, I believe it was our last pack meeting. We just had a, hey, it's a celebration for our one year anniversary of virtual meetings. If you can call it a celebration, we yeah. did a game night to make it fun. Um, but yeah, so March 30th, um, we started meeting. First, it was just the Tigers and me, and we met every Monday like normal. Um, I also encouraged them to do the Wednesday meeting with uh, the council at that time. And uh, I kept going, hey, any leaders need help? I'll help you out. I can do this, you know, and nobody was jumping in. So I started, um, I think it was in May, I started leading the Tigers on Monday. I led the Wolves on Tuesday. I had Wednesday free for the council one. Thursday, I did the the bears and Friday I did we blows. So I was meeting um, at least four days a week. I was leading our Cub Scouts to get them all to rank. Um, so we met all through, you know, the end of June. Actually, I think we went through July because we were getting a late start to get everybody to rank. And then we met um, our summer activities. We had a Kahoot night. We had um, our Ranga Regatta virtually. Um, something at least two every month we had all summer. And then as the normal school scout year started, we started up our regular meetings every Monday, just like normal. Um, and then we do our, our pack meetings as close to normal as we can. We had uh, one bumped because of the snow, but I couldn't make deliveries in the snow. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. But uh, what we've heard is just the importance of that cadence. We took a pause in our, in our troop for a little bit. And then I was just really inspired to, to reboot everything because that cadence was so important and important for the kids to to have something to look forward to that was regular because school was, uh, 
why, you know, who knows what's going to happen and still sometimes feels that way. So that cadence is really, really important. So it's just a great example, I think, for everybody to hear that, that when something like this happens, just that regular thing for these for these kids to look forward to is just is super super huge especially when we don't have the outings and things that we normally might do and so so that's just really really great and speaking of which I mean I think it's all paid off because you weren't you did you guys recruit some new kids I believe so right yeah we have uh well we have four tigers this year which are all new obviously um we have a two new wolves we have a new bear uh two new weeblows this year um so we have somebody new in every day this year so awesome. that's great that's really really great and have they been how did these kids for the most part how did they find out are they have they been following along did they just get invited uh a little of everything we had a couple come from another pack that wasn't active and they heard that we were active so they um came over uh we had some that were friends of leaders outside of our pack we have recruiting with friends coming in um we had a couple siblings from kids that um, were older already in the pack. Great. Well, I think that this cadence has paid off and, and the moment keeping as much as possible, this momentum going now, and you don't have a full-time job, do you? <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, I, this I'm a learning this coach. is like a full-time job. So, <laughs> well, and with online school, that's my job too, because yeah. right. I will tell you, I feel for all of you guys that have had to do that part extra because I have not worked since my kids been in school because of the online school is a lot of work, you know, so. Right, right. And it's um, so boy, I just really I know everybody does appreciates all of this you had you said you had 2800 folks using the, the classroom. It's just incredible. But you can see people just clamoring for these resources. And it's really just fantastic that you you took the time and had the passion and have the passion to keep this going and and what I love is that it's it is all evergreen it's it's we can do this anytime or I was just thinking if kids are not feeling well I mean not just COVID but just in general you know in the future they can they can still tune in and and share share in the experience with all of these these tools you've created which is just so fantastic. Well, awesome. Uh, I have not seen any questions rolling. Let me check on Facebook real quick here. I don't see any questions rolling in. So that's great. Of course, you've explained everything super, super well. So that's that's really awesome. Well, hey, Deb, thank you so much. Oh, oh go ahead. Well, I was going to add something while you're looking for questions. Yeah. Um, We've actually added programs too. Um, we added a Wednesday night Nova club that I run every week. Um, and about 30% of our pack comes every week to do Nova Club, we do all the Nova Awards. So if you have a Nova counselor or Supernova mentor um, to run that in your pack, there's a Google Google Classroom for that too, and a Cubmaster Classroom, so. Well, that's great. And, and there are just so many resources, I think, out there. What you've created, I know the council's created, what what the BS, National BSA has created, what other councils have created, and it, it is so fantastic. I mean, the, the tools and resources, if anything, if there's anything COVID has taught us is that we can do it differently and we don't have to be set in stone and that we can really leverage technology, even if we didn't know how to use it. I mean, how, how many of us actually used Zoom before? And now we can, we realize we can actually do this. I think it gives us the opportunity to be more nimble and creative and uh, by golly, we keep saying everybody's shown grit that's for sure it's been really pretty amazing well i will uh, if you don't mind i'll share my screen now and we'll mm -hmm. just make a couple last minute uh last minute things here say 351 we just celebrated our 100th meeting on zoom wow <laughs> wow that's if you could celebrate that's... again <laughs> grit i know and and yeah to <laughs> celebrate it uh, i don't know but no that's that's really, really just amazing. And I just want to let everybody know, you know, as we get back into things, it's really, it's important that we stay safe, that we, we follow the, some, the guidelines that we have. You've done some real hybrid things where there's, there's in-person, there's, there's virtual, you're doing something this weekend with the rockets. And so I really want to encourage people to, to get back at it at this normalcy of whatever that means and whatever is comfortable for, for you and your parents and your scouts and, and doing it safely can totally absolutely happen. So, and on that note too, 
you saw the summer camp videos at the very beginning, which were done pre-COVID. So, but a lot of it's going to be the same. We're all, we have some new, uh, just some new protocols and things that we're going to walk through. We'll have, uh, so we'll have all of those updates actually next week at our summer camp update webinar. So that's at noon, as always at the, the last Wednesday of the month, we do the summer camp one until summer camp launches because things seem like they've they've been in flux <laughs> pretty much this entire year, right? So so the the gang, just the camping crew, just will give us the latest and greatest information, the latest and greatest on the protocols and things we need to be aware of as well. So, so please tune in for that. Then in April, just so you know, April's actually National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And so the BSA has designated it as Youth Protection Month, and this is for councils and units and all of this. So we're going to share a ton of tools and resources and some some new things as well, which is going to be fantastic in April. So all of the webinars in April are on this theme, and it's going to be it's going to be really great. So April seventh, we'll focus on youth protection, the resources for for families and leaders and parents and all of that. April fourteenth is Mental Health First Aid. I'm really excited about that because we've COVID has really, it's been hard on, on everybody and the kids especially. And so we're going to dive into that and it's going to be really fantastic. So please tune in for that. Also, April 21st, we're going to do a bullying prevention uh, and it's, talk about the Choosing Kindness campaign that actually was launched a couple of years ago here in the CPC. And, uh, and it's really, it's going to be great. So there's just some fantastic tools. And then we'll tie it all together back with our summer camp update at the last month, uh, the last Wednesday of the month with some talking about safety at camp and the, this will be the latest and greatest on the protocols that we're taking that we're taking into account and that will be in place that uh, so when you go to camp it won't be the exact same as what we're used to some changes and whatnot but it's going to be fantastic so super super excited for that so please join in you can see these on our on Facebook as well as in your email so for those of you in the CPC check your email tomorrow because all of the links to all of this will be there so you'll get our compass points newsletter that's our weekly newsletter it goes out it has all the links to everything that's that's happening so please watch your email for that check your spam filters because you know it tends to get in there sometimes so so please check your email for that well thanks gang everybody for joining us such so grateful for uh, for deb for joining us today and uh, and so excited to see what her pack has been has been doing and will do and hopefully it inspires encourages all of you to to dive in and do the same so thanks for much so much for joining us today and uh, we will see you all next week